Approved. 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 Look at you. You who were once so proud. Go now and never return. Approved. 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 No. It's now illegal. I don't know. How's it going, everybody? My name is Swanny, and welcome back to another video. Guys, the last episode was pretty sweet. We got to see the Hashira duke it out a little bit. Gyu and Shinobu. Shinobu almost had Gyu with the knife in her shoe. Didn't see that coming, uh, but fortunately, Gyu, Tanjiro, and Nezuko were all saved by crows. I know that sounds crazy out of context, but the crows were basically saying that Tanjiro and Nezuko need to be summoned, and Shinobu and Gyu need to relax. I don't know, would that knife had actually killed Gyu? I feel like Gyu would have had something up his sleeve, but I don't know, it looked, it looked pretty close to me. But yeah, I'm assuming this episode is going to pick up right where we left off. One of you in the comments left a great comment with that uh, explaining Rui's backstory. I was confused on, you know, why they didn't just do what Tanjiro and Nezuko were doing and kind of save him. But it turns out that this is a different time in Japan. And in this time, the act of love would have been to basically end Rui and also end themselves in the process. I think from an honor standpoint, I can see... Honestly, the comment explains it really well, and I'm doing a terrible job. Uh, I just can't remember all of it. But it did make sense. But yeah, I appreciate you guys leaving insightful comments. It always, you know, helps the experience and helps clarify things uh, for the show. Things that someone as dumb as me can't understand. Uh, because that went right over my head. But yeah, I'm interested in seeing where this episode goes. The Hoshers all look pretty sick. Hopefully they hear Tanjiro out. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into the video. <laughs> Tanjiro got knocked out. And he was tired from the fight, so. Yeah, I guess it is te technically a trial because it's against the rules. Damn, they all look so sick. Bro, the headquarters. I didn't even think about it being a trial. I guess? <laughs> Bro, I'm so used to just seeing Nezuko that I don't think it's a big deal. But I guess to them, like, they've never seen this from a demon before. Okay, that guy is spaced out. Okay. Dude, look at the size difference between these two Hashira's legs and feet. Oh my god! Bro, this guy looks like a... This guy looks evil. Look at how serpent Hashira. Yeah, I mean, Gi did defend him, but this girl is very, um... She, she gasses up everybody. Yeah, 
Thank you, Shinobu. Hear him out. Yeah, at least let him say his piece first. Mm. He also probably hasn't had water in six or seven episodes. <laughs> it's true. That's very, that's very, it's a very strong piece of evidence. That guy loves flamboyancy. And this guy has no clue where he is right now. <laughs> Bro, these angles are crazy if you catch my drift. <laughs> Wind Hashra. <laughs> this girl. Yeah, how you guys just gonna let him get the box like that? Thank you, Shinobu. See, Shinobu is very reasonable, very grounded. Oh, hell no, nah, dude. <laughs> Bro, Tanjiro just... Bro, Tanjiro just headbutted his ass. Damn. Yeah! Wow, he got the hit off. That's... That's insane. This is the guy that, uh... Summoned... Shinobu and Giyu. Nah, that guy is, uh... That guy's whack for stabbing the box. Okay, so he's blind. He just... Okay. I was like, damn, that's a cheap shot. Okay. Na Sanami. I love how, like, cordial he is now. Yeah. This guy's so full of shit. Let's go. No debate. That's tough. Cause the master has approved. Okay, so that guy has some memory issues, short term. Okay, 
Kodaki, okay. God, he's so goaded. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I feel you, Tanjiro. Wow. Yeah. That's so true. Damn. Yeah, this master is big brain. Very reasonable. Yeah, he did. Oh. Wow. But what are the chances if it if it's that rare? Okay, yeah. This guy this guy holds some power over the Hashras. Wow. Damn, I got chills. Or did this guy not hear anything that he said? I mean, I understand what he's saying, but he just said that Nezuko's different. Okay. Oh, Nesco. You're good, you're good, you're good. But see, is the master just fine just letting this all happen? Ooh! Dude! Bro, this guy is unhinged. Stabbing my grill like that? Damn, bro. I bet Tomioka is sweating. His life is on the line right here. Same with Tanjiro and Kodaki. Ooh, Nesco. Put the eyes away, put the No! Damn! One of you had asked if I could, I guess, identify or kind of give an analysis on the Hashira. So with what I've seen, I have I have them all listed out. Uh, I ended up going back and taking notes on like their speech, their language, and basically, you know, their overall vibe. So I have heard the Flame Hashira, 
upbeat high energy right it makes sense flame fire you know alive right i get that very alive feeling he he says everything with such i guess like with his chest that's basically about it he kind of shows the same face so you have upbeat and high energy for the flame hashira and for the sound hashira i have flamboyant and stylish he's the only one that kind of you know everyone has a unique look but he's got like accessories and he's you know added to his style he stated that he wanted tondro's decapitation to be done flamboyantly also made the note that Tondro looked boring. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I have for the sound Hashira, flamboyant. Love Hashira, I have love to everyone. Uh, <laughs> I loved how for each introduction of the Hashira, the love Hashira would like give her little positive peace. Makes perfect sense because she is the love Hashira. She also seems reserved, like she, um, it's all in her inner monologue, like she'll never, she doesn't say it, right? She, she seems bashful. Uh, next I have the stone Hashira, sad, what a pity, uh, he's crying the entire time and you know he said that he pities tanjiro everything's kind of sad for him also he's massive uh super super big dude i think he was standing behind the mist hashira uh and just the leg comparison and feet comparison were insane but that's kind of it it's kind of like again the flame hashira showed one face the stone hashira shows one face the mist hashira spaced out forgetful and i wrote short-term memory loss just because obviously it's not long-term memory loss because he knows he's a hashira he knows like that he's there right he's forgetful and you know he's spaced out because <laughs> he's looking at clouds and he's just kind of just lost and then i have shinobu the insect hashira you know grounded reasonable also mysterious somewhat sadistic yeah I mean, we already know a lot about shinobu same with giyu water hashira super chill relaxed off to the side as the love hashira said he's, he looks so cool off to the side despite his life being put on the line there towards the end you know it's still super cold but yeah we already know giyu uh the serpent hashira I put him, okay, I put instigator because I noticed he likes to, he doesn't poke the bear, but he watches. He watches you poke the bear. He, he was saying like, oh, well, what should, how should we decapitate him? What should we do? I noticed he used a lot of wheeze, kind of as if he's, he doesn't want anything, not that he doesn't want anything to do with it, but he wants to be in the background, right? Uh, kind of like a snake. I don't know, this guy just seems like the instigator, so not poke but watch. He looks like, <laughs> he doesn't look like a good guy, so. But yeah, I just have him as the instigator. I like his design, actually. Um, the different colored eyes are, are really cool. And for the Wind Hashira, I just have Ruthless on purpose, um, unhinged and stubborn. The guy, you know, he's not listening to the reasoning that the master gave, and even if he did, he's still, he's being stubborn and still, you know, giving his peace, right? And I don't like that. Um, on top of the fact that he stabbed my girl Nezuko like 20 times. Also not a fan of that. They're all very unique, so it's very easy to analyze like their personality traits. Had I not seen Gyu, I probably wouldn't have anything to give him. Um, but yeah, everyone's kind of got their own deal, uh, which I like a lot. It's like, you, you know, a, a motley crew. So the master, he needed the girls to guide him to like the edge of the deck. So... I'm gonna go ahead and assume that he can't see and he's blind. Uh, Tondro made the note that it, it wasn't an injury but maybe a sickness and I'm thinking that's what it is just because when Zenitsu got sick or poisoned or whatever kind of had that purple you know his veins were popping or had like the, the raises on the arm and and everything like that I kind of get the vibe that he's sick and it's gone past his eyes so if he is sick then it, that's what took out his vision yeah that guy is like he has such presence right when he came out the wind hashiro you know went from a very loud and arrogant speech to a very calm and cordial and what tanjiro said formal speech so he definitely carries some weight on top of the fact when he raised his finger to his mouth to hush them they all stopped they all stopped bickering they all stopped arguing and they all listened to him on top of the fact that they all bowed for him so he definitely has some presence also the master states that tanjiro is the only one that's seen muzan which is interesting because that means tanjiro has something that the hashiras don't you know that's leverage that's that's great um <laughs> that's another reason for them not to want to kill him or at least the master i'm sure that maybe influenced his decision on top of the fact that the master already seems, you know, calm, collected, has a strong head on his shoulders. So Tanjiro has seen Muzan, which actually makes it a lot cooler because no one else has seen Muzan. And it makes perfect sense because if Muzan is all-powerful, 
uh, then no one would, you know, make it out of his sight. Had Tanjiro been anywhere else to see Muzan, and that would have ended so poorly, but Muzan was with his family and he was in a public area. Yeah, great episode, great introduction of the Hashira. There's a couple Hashira I'm not too crazy about, but uh, most of them seem chill, most of them seem fine, reasonable, and are willing to at least hear Tanjiro out. Shinobu clutched up, because I feel like Giyu wasn't going to talk anyway. So Shinobu was like, hey, like everyone, like, you know, it's okay, like, pipe down, pipe down, like, let's listen to... Tanjiro's reasoning, I'd like to hear why he's, you know, carrying around a demon. I feel like had Shinobu not been there, it would have ended a little, you know, <laughs> maybe would have ended poorly. Probably not, though, because the master seemed to have had a good grasp on things. But that was a great episode. Left us off with a cliffhanger of Nezuko looking at the blood of the Wind Hashira. Her demon eyes are out, which is not a good sign. But yeah, I think that's all I have for this episode. I have the full reaction on Patreon. I have a Discord where we talk about the episode that I'm on or anime recommendations you may have. Both of those links will be in the description below. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It'd be greatly appreciated. All right, hope you all have a good one.